everybody. Today's video is just a little bit of fun and it, it's about this. Until recently this was a Logitech squeeze box and it was best be described as an internet radio. I bought this probably more than 10 years ago and it was actually quite an expensive piece of kit. I seem to remember it was about 640 New Zealand dollars or roughly half that in American or UK pounds. So not a cheap piece of kit by any means. Being here in New Zealand, the radio, in my humble opinion, is not terribly good. All the stations bar one are full of advertisements. I know that's quite common in many countries, but coming from the UK and listening predominantly for the BBC, you get used to all the stations within the BBC um, domain being advertisement free. And it just, it just, I just find it awful when every seven to eight minutes, if you're lucky, you have to put up with two or three minutes of advertisements. Anyway, that's another story. So I was basically very delighted to be able to pick up this internet radio, which meant I could listen to any station, anywhere on the planet, in relatively good quality sound. By and large, at least they didn't fade, they didn't distort, and unlike shortwave, which would have been the only other option here in New Zealand, which you can only pick up at certain times of the day, and on some days, not at all. It just, just, just isn't there. Anyway, that's why I ended up with this internet radio. And I've used it largely as a, a bedtime, a bedtime, a bedside, well, it was bedtime as well, a bedside radio. And I use it primarily for speech, i.e. late at night, I just want to hear the news. Its main criteria was that the sound should be reasonably clean. Well, that's all worked very well for the last 10 years, except all of a sudden, probably six months ago, the BBC, in its great wisdom of not having any money and nobody paying the licence fees, they decided that they were going to stop the server that sends the BBC around the world and they would concentrate only on the BBC iPlayer, which is fine if you have a computer or laptop or even a telephone, but it's meant that this box no longer picked up the BBC. So that was the major disaster. But then to follow that, the server that, well, I should say the main server on the squeeze box itself decided they didn't want to support it anymore. And virtually overnight with, with probably a month's notice, they just switched off the server, which meant that that box was 100% virtually useless. Dustbin, landfill. I was not a happy bunny. So what was my options to continue listening to the BBC? Well, obviously, as a bedside radio, you don't want a computer because I have computers here and in the main listening room and if listening to the BBC is no problem at all. But on the bedside, I wanted a smallish box that would be able to continue where I'd left off, basically. Overall, I decided that a telephone would be... <laughs> smartphone, I, I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic. A smartphone would be the option but the sound quality from those things is bordering on atrocious, if not worse. So that was not in itself an option. So then I thought, well, I'll have to get one of these so-called smart speakers. But when I looked at the price of these things, 
if you wanted something that was semi-reasonable, they are extortionate prices for basically a, a three watt amplifier and a little tacky speaker in a, in a box made of plastic. Worst case, I know. So I thought, no, there's no way I'm spending that kind of money on, on something like that. So in comes the box. What I've decided to do is to gut it, basically, because all that I want to save from it is the loudspeakers. And there are two speakers on there and they are actually fairly good quality within the realms of it being in a tiny chamber. But the, the biggest problem is all the electronics in it was based on the Internet and clearly all I wanted was an amplifier well and and, and a, a bluetooth module so that's what i decided to do the original amplifier in it was a class d of, of about eight watts like most of these things it had the famous frequency response like that all bass and all treble and speech sounded like that speech was very muffled as you'd expect with excessive bass lift sounded a bit like an edifier speaker but we won't go there here we have the speakers a little soft dome tweeter which is a fabric material and what's that probably about a four inch woofer with quite a decent throw on it this is the amplifier module and it's a little Class D TPA3118. And it's a mono amplifier. Well, in this configuration, it, it's a mono amplifier. It's basically two stereo amps in a kind of bridge. I chose this one, A, because it's physical size. It would fit in the space that I had. Also, it's dirt cheap, which in itself is a kind of issue because this is actually the third one that I've purchased. <laughs> this particular module is available in many different disguises, either as a stereo amplifier um, or in this case it's reputedly a 60 watt mono amplifier. 60 watts and that's the main chip and no heat sink whatsoever. So you'll be surprised to hear that it doesn't give 60 watts, which in this application, it doesn't matter because the speakers on here, I reckon are probably rated at about 10 watts. You'll know by now that China is a bit prone to fake components. And this module is a beautiful candidate for it. This is actually a 32 pin chip. Now, there are many on the market that are a 28 pin chip, which is kind of unusual because Texas Instruments that reputedly make this chip don't make a 28 pin version. It's a bit vague to try and find out this, but the very first one that I purchased, being a little bit green regarding this chip, I just saw it in there and I thought, I'll buy one of those. I fitted it into the, into the um, enclosure. It, it's reputedly capable of running from 12 volts to 24 volts DC single-ended. So it's just a single end. You don't need a, a plus and minus supply like many of these amplifiers, which is fine because that's exactly what I've got. So I had it all connected up. Um, I show you the other modules presently, switched it on and it was fine. It was making a strange warbling noise, but more of that later. And I connected it up to um, my computer switched it on and I was halfway through Cat Stevens because initially I started it off on just 12 volts current limited and it was fine it got halfway through the song 
by now I'm getting very confident. So I turned up the voltage to 15 volts halfway through the song and bang! That was the end of that one. Didn't like 15 volts at all. And I wasn't doing PA levels. It was just ordinary background levels listening. And you know, it's the way you start off cautiously with any new product, don't you? So it didn't like 15 volts. Now bear in mind it's supposed to be able to accept 24. I was a little upset that it, it had a, an early demise. That went in the landfill along with loads and loads of things I've put there in the past. I did a bit of research on it and the, loads of people have used this. I'll buy two or three of these as they're so cheap. So I did and I put the next one in the case and uh, cautiously wound up the voltage, got all the way up to 15 volts and it still didn't go bang so I was full of... and this incidentally was the 32 pin version whereas the original one was the 28 pin version. The 28 pin version by the way has no markings on it whatsoever, is a fake something, I don't know what it is but it's a fake something and there's the possibility that the 32-bit version classed as original chip could be genuine. I don't know. But it didn't go bang. But equally saying that, I'm not brave enough to put 24 volts on it. I don't need to. This, this gives more than enough power as it is. A quick chat now about the Bluetooth module. There are thousands of different kinds on Ali and eBay and, and similar companies. Again, they cost pennies. The one that I chose, you may recall nearly two minutes ago, I told you that I would be running this off 15 volts. Most of these Bluetooth modules are designed for 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Now, obviously with 15 volts, I don't have that voltage available. I chose one that also has the standard 5 volt input and it's usually in the form of a USB input and it also has um, a regulated input and it accepts anything from about 5 or 6 volts up to 30 volts in some cases. So I chose the module because I could simply run it off whatever voltage largely I ran the amplifier from. Now you'd think that would be the end of the story, wouldn't you? In fact, the world isn't like that, is it? After I got it all connected up, I found it um, connected to my telephone instantly. But in the background, there was this kind of strange warbling sound. Um, I wish I'd actually recorded some to demonstrate this to you. When you use the module off the 5 volt USB, you have an external power supply, don't you? I.e. a 5 volt power supply. And it works perfectly, silently. But when I connected it from the 15 volts input, you are there share, you're then sharing a common earth and that is the problem you get a warbling sort of unstable sound not loud and it's drowned out by music but obviously you can hear it in silent parts of speech and things like that and it's i hate to try and simulate it but it's sort of sort of sound dreadful i don't do impressions sorry <laughs> anyway Again, I had to find out what the problem was. And it's simply the module doesn't like to share the ground with the um, power supply. Simple as that. And ironically, I've encountered this before when I used one of these modules. And I ended up having to put a separate power supply on that. But I thought, well... The space is so limited in here, I can't add another power supply. And equally, I didn't want to feed the, the module itself 
with an external 5 volt that has two lots of cables going to it and two power adapters? This is the answer. This is a little DC to DC converter. Pennies cost about $5, 5 New Zealand dollars. Um, again, I bought two or three of them because I thought it would be a useful device. Now, in itself, a DC to DC converter wouldn't help the problem because you're still using a common naught rail, if you like, or ground rail. But this, this particular converter is, um, is isolated, so there is no direct connection on the ground supply or, or, or the other supply or the main supply. And this particular one will accept 18 volts to 36 volts input and gives a 12 volt 416 milliamps. Very precise. I'm not using anywhere near that. These little modules consume about 10 milliamps, but they don't make a smaller one. So that's what I've used in the end, and it completely solves the problem. Now, theoretically, it won't operate, and I thought I would have to up the volts to 18 volts, because that's what it says is the minimum voltage. But as it happens in the real world, it runs on 15 volts perfectly. So that's what I'm doing. That is what isolates the supply. And it, the, the Bluetooth now is absolutely silent. So there is the little module in situ. Hard to see, I'm afraid, because it's black and the cabinet's black, and <laughs> apart from the cabling. But anyway, it's in there and it's just tucked down in the side there. And if I move over slightly, here is the Bluetooth module. This again is a black capacitor and I can't remember the value of it, but I think it's somewhere around about four microfarad. And that's basically a simple crossover in series with the tweeter. Here's the, the class D amplifier and the module and just off camera, we've got the front panel, which will go on here. And I've left all the original buttons in place, even though they don't do anything. And all we have in here that actually works, this knob is glued in, so it doesn't do anything. And this one is an on off for power and a volume control, which is literally if I, it comes out of the um, Bluetooth on this wire, goes into the volume control, mono of course, and straight into the power amplifier. And that's it. Ah, this is what it sounds like. From other parts of the country to protect areas like homes in Damascus, other groups have seen an opportunity. Syrian Kurds are advancing in the Far East.